Uh, thank you. HEDA is an environment NGO, and all, all the work we do, we do from the rights-based perspective. perspective. Um, we work with, in, in conjunction with other civil society organizations to try to ensure that Nigeria, for instance, a country with 167 million people, a country that is a climate front line to the south we are, we are bounded by the Atlantic Ocean, and 11 states in northern Nigeria are already being uh, pressed in by the, uh, by the Sahara Desert. So Nigeria is a serious climate front line. So we work with government to ensure that we have the kind of right policy response um, at the national level, at the state level, and at the local government level. Mm -hmm. Also, importantly, we work with communities, uh, communities of farmers, um, communities that are threatened by climate change. And one of our most interesting work is the work we do with farmers, small-scale farmers. Uh, these are people who provide the food we eat, but they are also people who are uh, most vulnerable to climate change. Um, whenever we have extreme weather events um, like droughts, like um, flooding, these are the people whose livelihoods, whose homes, whose culture, whose identity, whose health, whose well-being are most uh, impacted. Uh, so we work with these people to, to bring awareness, to understand what their needs are, to know what kind of um, coping strategies they've had in the past, why are they not working if they are not, and if they are working out, can they be enhanced? Um, so we, we work essentially with these people. Importantly, we help to make their voices heard at the policy level, and we also link them up with new research findings, improved crops, improved seedlings. We link them, for instance, with institutes like the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture. Uh, these are some of the things we do with, at the community level. Right. I mean, when you get involved at the community level, do you find that people are very quick to understand that their problems, that the increased droughts, the increased floodings, the other problems, climate change problems, are related to climate change? Uh, and, what, and do they understand fairly quickly what needs to be done when you give them the tools or help them develop the tools to, to, to speak out? Uh, well, in the last few years, awareness about linkage between climate change and um, the realities that they are facing on Ghana is, has increased. But still, importantly, people do not understand why this is... I mean, they've always lived with some measure of flooding, some measure of rain. But now, rain seasonal pattern, for instance, is no longer predictable. And Africa is essentially dependent on climate, uh, uh, on rain-fed agriculture. So we have this uh, challenge. Uh, also, people at this level think that, okay, whatever happens to us is from God. So there is this dominating uh, God imagery, um, which unfortunately helps to excuse so many things. And it, it brings a sense of powerlessness and helplessness. Uh, but these are issues we're contending with. These are issues we're working with at this community level. And there are remarkable improvement. Uh, but a lot still needs to be done. People need to know how they link with this, how our agricultural practices our policy makers impact on what is happening, how uh, the kind of lifestyle choice we make, the kind of livelihood choices we make uh, impact on the environment and the cycle uh, it comes back to tell on us. So these are the everyday work we're doing at community level to make people more aware, to help them with those information that empowers them to take decisions, you know, and also to also make the right kind of demands from policy makers at the local, state and national levels. You say more needs to be done. You're obviously doing what you can. Uh, what help, what would make the situation better, what would make the framework better from a national, from a Nigerian government level and from the international level? Uh, importantly at national level, and that's not only to Nigeria, all of Africa, and I think the same could be said for most developing states, um, is that we need our national government, our state government, people who are saddled with responsibilities to deliver on those responsibilities, to use our resources wisely. And we cannot wait for the international negotiations because every day people are losing their lives, their livelihoods, their identity, their culture. So we need our national government to respond appropriately, to use the resources that we have wisely, to plan our cities, our communities, our agri-system to be more resilient. We need to have those kind of responses at the national level, but importantly at the global level. This negotiation is good that we are having the talk, but it's not enough people are having a sense of despondence. Um, we, we don't need for negotiations to just be there for the sake of negotiating. We need real action. We, we came here hoping that importantly we can get those who emit the most to know that people's lives are at risk. Already communities have gone into extinction. Many communities are on the verge of extinction. So it's not about commerce, it's not about all the comfort that people uh, in developing countries are concerned about. It's about real issues, it's about existential uh, issues for people in communities around Africa and some other places. So